Captain Eddie Castle and welcome to my shop. You know, a stitch in time saves nine. Boy, that's such a nice rhyme. I might be able to save that. Oh, wait. I've been working on a little project. And if things worked out right, you'll get me, you'll see me make this. It's a button. Now, let's zoom in here and so you can see it. This is a button. Well, it's a needle and thread. Button with a needle and thread. Uh, I, I'm when I was a kid, my dad. Well, my dad was a Borden milkman. He delivered milk door to door to door for thirty something, almost forty years. And uh, he had to wear a white shirt with buttons on it. And uh, yeah, yeah, kind of tough on things. Buttons pop off. Dad's thing was, I need them sewed back on. We had five kids. We all took turns learning how to sew buttons back on. Well. I'd like Dad to see this one. This is pretty nice. It's just a display piece. It's a hardwood doll and a blank, and we cut it out using two jigs, three jigs. But we did a few things that you can do too. And all you have to do if you want to do this, you know what you have to do? You gotta watch. This is like pushing a chain. Once you get it started, you're okay. But hey, if this worked out right, got kind a of nifty little project to help you get out of it if you stepped in it. You know what I mean? All right, most of us are married and we understand that. I'm going to start with a block of wood. A guy brought me this, and I, I really, it was a long time ago, it went far, far away, and I don't remember what it was, but it's got some beautiful character in it. It's got some lovely color and a little red, which means it's going to turn out really nice. You've seen that already. It turned out really nice. We're going to make this project using one block of wood and a Hobby Lobby bought 3 8 inch hardwood dowel. And I say the Hobby Lobby part because it's a product of China. But it's fairly straight. It's split. And really, I mean, I think it doesn't have a hook to it. And that's going to be important with what we do to it. So we're going to try to do this with some very basic tools. No exotic holdbacks or anything else. But if there's an option for me to tell you how to get around this or get around that, follow that option. Remember, what's in here matters, and that's the only thing that's important in life. What's in here? So let's get out there and make some... Oh, yeah, by the way, why don't we just start making some shavings? To get started, we're going to go to our one-way stronghold chuck. It, this could also be a Barracuda, an Apprentice, a Vic Mark, or anybody else's chuck. I'm going to put a chuck in. Then we're going to put in my set of, if you have them, round bronze best expandable jaws. Now this could be a long worth thing that you make yourself. You get the kit from us on our website, www.eddiecastellan.com. You know. All right, we got the kit and all the drawings and all you need are on the website, how to do it. But we've just put the revolving center in. We purposely reach over and bring the speed way down because look at this. I don't want that spinning too quick. Okay, now, next thing is I'm going to put that block of wood we have in here. And I'm going to hold it. I'm going to open these jaws up and hold it. That way I can put the first cut on it. Got it? Got it. Now when you put this disc in the, the, the chuck, the way this is, there's a bolt that's sticking out in the center. If that gets in your way, it's about three eighths of an inch, you can always put a big piece of, of, of where's one at? I got one right here. All right, you take a piece of plywood, put a hole in it, it's not in a, on our side in the center and you put it there to give you a buffer to hold it off square but I'm lazy or I find it an easy way so I normally just spin it look at it and if it's out of line and it doesn't line up right I give it a little tap get it right before I tighten those screws up like what I like about Ron Brown's best jig is I can use my one-way Allen screw to go around and snug them up. Why? 
because I got some fingers are weaker than others. And winter's back. Yesterday it was 82 degrees walking around in the yard. I sprayed weed killer and um, yeah, I don't like the weeds. I'm going to kill them. And uh, I edged and I cleaned up. I rode the tractor, clean thing, all these little things. I just talked to Roger up in Hattiesburg and he said it's cold enough to snow up there. It ain't cold enough to snow in the hill, but when it came back, now it's 56 degrees outside. Wow. All right. Now I'm square. Roger and I were talking about buying cutters. He had a guy that wants to buy cutters. We sell cutters at Big Eye Productions. EddieCastellan.com. We're probably one of the cheapest on the planet. We have the cutters. And I can't tell you that my cutters are replacements for somebody else's. Here's the truth. Most of all of our cutters come out the same machine. Almost all of them. And if we can't get the exact thing, we'll get close enough to make a difference. Bring up my revolving live center, and I've got my soft touch on there. It's a shop made tool. Now, I brought that up. Why? That's my insurance policy. What do you mean? Well, if I turn this thing on and start running with it, and I start cutting, and something happens and it wants to move that way, this is not going to let it move that way. This is not going to let it move that way. This one way down here is not going to let it move that way. So that's, I'm between points. I'm safer now. I'm going to shield up. Wish I could turn the heater on. And put my first divot here. Got it? Got it. Oh, remember, we have to always be on page one. That's important. I'm going to put a receiver in the bottom of this that I can hold this on, and then I can finish some of these shapes on the outside and trim a little bit, but I can't work on the south side edge because of bumpers. But when I go to the center, I want to have a recess that will fit on my one-way stronghold jug. This is the template for my recess. See this gizmo? It's just a piece of corian with a couple of notches cut in it. This large one right here, that's the minimum size that it fits in. That fits in, this is the minimum size that fits over. In, over. Okay, got it? And I put a little rare earth magnet on it because it sleeps right there on the lathe. And, and I'm starting removing paint and cleaning things up. We are going to make this thing look nice again, just like me and you. Okay, so I look nice and you don't. It's, it's all right. It's okay. Shields up. I always tell you there's several ways to do things. Um, my experience has been, my daddy told me this, fat people find the easiest way. Hey, think about it. They don't want burn off all the calories. Um, I'm going to go to my one-way stronghold and I'm going to see what this dimension is on my stronghold. And that's measuring the outside of my jaws because I want to get this right. So that's the outside of my jaws. Okay, that's the minimum. Then I'm going to go over here and look at what I just put on I gotta say this right off the bat. Damn, I'm good. Look at that. That's my reference mark, and that's exactly where I wanted to be. Exactly where I want. Not just close. Exactly where I wanted to be. So that's gonna be the size of my divot. It must be hell to be this good. Well, it is really. Shields up. little safety note here. I cleaned up some of this to get to put my recess in. I'm using my template to guide me. Remember the template? That'd be the guide size right there. And that's what I'm looking to do. Match that. I need to have a little undercut on it to make the, the chuck open up properly. I moved my tailstock back out the way, but now I'm being held only between these bumpers. Caution. These will hurt, break, damage, bend, whatever. This will cut you too. So I have to concentrate on using that controller, not this one, 
that controller the start and stop so I'm not getting my arms and hands near this. Okay, enough of a safety minute. We're going to get back to turning. Shields up. I tell you, sometimes drawing, you know, will make you understand. This is a piece of three quarters that's looking at it down over the top. All right, we turned a little bit. Now, I want to put the recess in here and see how I've got those little dovetails going in. That's so it matches my revolve, my one-way profile jaws when they open. Because the pressure I want to exert on this piece is going to be right here and right here. Those are the two key areas. I want to put pressure on those areas to hold this thing in the chuck. But now, once I do all this and I turn around, I won't be able to come back to this spot. I really we can't get close. So right now what I'm going to do is clean this up about a quarter inch deep, that's all. And then I'm going to face this off a little bit. Bring it around, face it off, bring it around. But I always have to keep in mind that my eventual button will have a circle on the end or end on it and then it will dish in, dish back out to another end or anything else I want for it. So I have to plan where does this quarter inch come out of? I got a quarter here and I'm going to take a quarter here that leaves me with a quarter left over. Three quarters gives me one, two, three. Yeah, three, two, one. Okay, draw it out one time. You'll understand it much better. I put my recess in. I'm slightly tapered in here, slightly tapered in here. And I use my skew to do that, which I have cut to match the profiles. So when I go in here, I'm sure I'm a little bit undercut. You can do it with any kind of scrape you want. You can buy one in the store, but I own the, the skew. Now, <clears throat> I have that done. I don't want to jump the gun, but I want to put a finish on this now. Get all this done and seal it right now because I can't come back to it later easily. I can come back to it, not easily. So, if you want to do that, we're going to sand it out and put a little finish on it. Got it? Got it. Another little quick note. The top of the tool rest should be as clean as possible. Smooth. The guy called me this morning at my home phone number, which is the number you get at the end of the screen. It's the only phone we have. And he said, what about me buying one of those bars with a steel that's, that can't be impregnated or, or, or damaged? Good idea. Robust Tools makes them. Uh, and it, but remember, you have to measure your tool rest size and then talk to the people don't try to guess at it because you can't go back and modify this if it doesn't fit it just doesn't fit now we have the tool rest all smoothed out because I had some um, finish I was applying a minute ago a little sealer on it and that sealer could get on here and that will create bumps bumps here or bumps there shields up Okay, I knocked a little fuzz off, got it down, got me a nice plank. I'm staying away from this corner because I want this corner to be full when I go around it. Uh, if you don't understand that, I don't want to go around this corner. But this is my, this is a great opportunity to get done in here. I'm going to take a little fine scraper and clean this up a little bit, sand it, and put a coat of finish on it. Hold on, hold on. Why am I putting a finish on it? I'm just getting started? Because it's in stages and I want to get it done. Now you can see that time as it was coming across. The little curly cues that came off. And this got in very good shape. I'll take some 150 paper and clean it up. I sanded it to 320. That's what I would do for any other finished piece. 
and I put two coats of sealer on it. I buffed it out a little bit. It's almost ready for the final coat. Look at the chatoins. Do you see the reflectability of it? Because I sanded it properly and I got rid of all the scratches. So I the color will go in and color will come out. Let's get this thing out of this chuck and get it turning. It's how when the name thing goes away. After my stroke, the name thing went away. I can't remember the names of stuff. So forgive me if sometimes I call things by the wrong title. I'll try to correct it or put a graphic up on the screen. The other day I was trying to explain to a guy about SWAT. And he's thinking it's a thing that comes on TV on Wednesday nights. That's not it. I think it comes on Thursdays. But uh, SWAT is Southwest Association of Turners. S-W-A-T. It's in Waco, Texas. It's this weekend, August 22 to 25. It's in Waco. It's fantastic. And he was asking me, am I going to be there? Of course I'm going to be there. See that receipt? That receipt? Recess I put on? I know how to call it. I'm going to put it right there on the face of my chuck. Then I'm going to open the jaws. Yes, I'm opening the jaws until that recess. Until that recess, which is going to hold that thing running very true. But, I'm a cocky young buck. And I tend to do things that you shouldn't do. I'm not going to. I'm going to bring up my one-way revolving center with my soft touch on it and put some pressure on it to do the early cutting because I don't want any vibration and I don't want this to go this way. Got it? Got it. We're back to page one. It's being held in a one-way stronghold chuck. The expanded jaws into a recess we created on the back, which is finished. That's over here. Not here, over here. Now, I want to true this up, make this run right. I want to put my little, de my little detail in here and get ready for the center. This is a fairly simple project. As simple or as complicated as you want to make it, it's a good little learning project. Shields up, which means put the hood down. Between centers. A little noise you heard meant it's running really, really well. Rubbing the bevel and making clean cuts going down into this. Now, I do I don't want to have a little bit of a crown on it. That's what I put on my sketch. And I want to stay away from this corner because when I get way out here, I'm going to have the most impact on the piece and I want to round it. But right now, I'm just getting rid of some meat, okay? And I'm still a good three eighths to a half inch thick back here. Of course, you could always get out your bowl gouge and your bowl caliper and measure it, right? Okay. I moved my tool rest around, I got it in position when the lathe was stopped. A caution tip, okay? Let's shield up. Too much pressure this way without having that center up, you'll blow it off across the road. Just cleaning it off a little bit so I can get a better look at it. I had a little, some little tears on the corner from a planing mark, and I got those. I got those out, and I slowed it down. I have stropped this in, 
with 150 soft paper, soft foam paper, to get this back edge, shoulder, the top, and this. And I'm pretty sure I can start living with this. Start living with it now. I'm going to pull my revolving center back a little bit so I can clean off this bottom and start my referencing. <coughs> I choked up over this. And I have my little fan up there blowing the sawdust down away from me. But it is chilly here today. Right to the center. Damn, when you're good, you're good. Now I gotta stop doing that, huh? All right, here's the deal. Tool rest does a lot to do with where you are. People say, well, what's this number? There is no number. There is no right or wrong except for you. You. I'm sitting on a stool today turning this, and I can feel that I've got some chatter up here that I, ha I don't have out. I'll get it out. I'll come back. You might see the little, see the little waves right there? That's not the wood. That's in the, that's in a cut. I got to clean that up. But I'm taking these light, light cuts. But sitting in a bench, I'm, my tool is going to be a little bit lower. So my tool rest is going to be a little bit different. Adjust yours where you are cutting dead center with the cutting part of your tool. Shields up. I'm trying to get you a musician you can see this. This is the bull nose of the corner. All right, and they come around, and then I got a little finger lift. And look at buttons. My wife is one of the world's most awesome seamstresses. She's the queen of quilting. And there's no two buttons in the world to look alike. Really? So I put a little little finger notch here, and they don't come into the to the crown in the center. And this is gonna stay about this high because I gotta put my holes in here to do it. But this is my opportunity to have some artistic in, uh, endeavor in this. If I want to make this shallower right now, I'm down to maybe uh, three eighths of an inch. I won't be too thin. Thin's not in. But oh God, I can take a, I can take advantage of this and shape this up a little bit and do my finer cutting and get rid of. I got some little tears up here and all. Well, I'm going to get rid of all that now before we go too far. Gotcha. Back up. Back up out of this way. There you go. Now we're going to crack it back up again. Shields up. talk about this occasionally scrapers or scrapers are scrapers yes okay when I'm using mine I don't want to be dead flat see that I don't want to be dead flat I want to be up on the slight bias because if there's a slight chance of a catch I want the tool to flex a little bit with me but I'm going to get a smoother cut I round this corner off and I keep it round and I keep this nice and clean so I can do my fine little smooth cut not a lot of pressure because I don't want to put any chatter in it. This wood will move. God said it will move. So it will move. So I'm going to do that and then I'm going to clean up the center. Shields up. close. See this? See that mark? Unacceptable. Means I tore something going down through there. I haven't fixed it yet. So I need to scrape that back out again. I could sand on this for 10 minutes and I won't get there. And I want to heat up the wood. So now I'm going to put the shield back up 
and we take some light scrapes across it. It's gone. It's gone now. It's acceptable to sand. I can sand this out. Now, if I left that mark in it, see, I got a little bit of a mark up there, but that'll come out with sanding. If I left the mark in it, there's two things we could do. Number one, throw it in a burn pile. Number two, just spit on it. We're going to raise this grain a little bit. That little bit of water, that's just w w water. No well water or anything else, just water. A little bit of water going in there is going to raise the grain a little bitty bit and let me get a better sand on it. And don't worry about it. And put enough water on it to hurt because in about a minute of spinning, that water is going to be gone, but that grain will be out and workable, and I'll be able to see my finish. See, I can see I got a little ridge right here. Right there, I got a little ridge. Puffed up a little bit. And I don't have it here. I have it here on the cross grains. So. Do that and they'll spin it and get it dry. You really need to be here to see this. Watch. This is a fine, fine, just sharp in my scraper. Dampening a little bit and then sharpening that scrape will let me take these little fine cuts and get these wispies out. Those will show in your finish. If I can see it now, I'll see it in the finish. Then I gotta explain it. Get a lot of explaining to do, Lucy, a lot of explaining. Now I'm drying a piece off and checking my finish using a paper towel. Not a rag or a cloth, a paper towel. If this grabs and binds up, it's going to tear out of my hand and go away. If it was a cloth that it tears and binds up, it's going to tear my hand away. So no cloths. The only rags come to my lathe are where? On my back. Now, I've got this sanded to 220, and I have no tears, no blemishes, no marks. And I look at all these grooves and these changes from these planes of cut, right? And I'm rather happy with this. Got the little finger on it, got the little grab on it, I like. I'm not so thin as to be dangerous. This is ready to go to the next step. The next step is to lay out the holes. I will learn how to press this button and get it drawn right. What I did is go back in, I put my plus in. That's the square. And you can do this with a square over the edge of the thing or whatever. I used the, the indexer to get it because I, I have it. If not, you just use one of these gauges and just slip over to do it. All right, I've got the X marked out. This was the edge of my recess inside, right here. I'm going to drill a 3 8 hole. It's 3 8 over up. And I don't want to be in that recess. I want to be outside of that recess when I go through. I'm going to take it over on a drill press right now and put my hole right on these points. A lot of laying out. Yeah, but I want it to look really, really good. I went over to the bat and did a drill press and I drilled the four holes for the threads to go through. What the, the color and the lights and all make it really look as, as crooked as it can be. Got it both front and back. This is ready to put on and sand out for a finish. That's what we're going to do now. I sanded out the 400 and I put a couple of coats of sealer on it and I didn't take my time to blow out the inside and rub a little seal on that. Those are all finished areas down in there. So this is looking really, really nice, both front and back. Now, if I want to do a little more work on the back, clean it up and put the finish on that way, that's where I'd go first and I'd flip it out, put it back in the jumbo jaws, I'm sorry, the Ron Brown's best jaws, and hold it and then I can work on that back. But when I flip it around, I'll have little marks from where the buttons were. And I'd clean it up again. Just one little touch to make perfect. 
Now it's time to turn the needle. The needle, what length? We didn't talk about width, width for this, but that looks like a pretty good needle for it, doesn't it? Sure, I can make that work. So I'm going to take a 3 8 inch dial. I bought it, Harbor Freight. I'm going to hold it in my spigot jaws, and I'm going to cheat a little bit. You know I will. So I'm going to take and put a piece of rubber hose. See it split? I got this at the hardware store. They almost give me that sample. Uh, all people won't, but the hardware will. So I'm going to put this down in there, bring up the jaws a little bit, and then I'm going to put a little pressure on it. And guess what? I can spin that now. It's almost true. And I can do some slight little adjustments on it to get it real true, just by bumping around a little bit and getting where I want it to be at. And I can bring up my tailstock spinner on it just to get started. I did tell you I cheat a little bit. To hold this centered, I took my live center, but look. Can you see what uh, Australia threw that? That right down. All right, I took the pin out. And I'm going to use the live center to center this up as a hollow center. It's going to be live. It'll be holding it. I'll move it up here and get it in place. This runs true to this. So when this starts running around, it's going to, wow, hold it right in line with it, didn't it? Yes. Cheat, 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 cheat. Shields up. Because one end has to be a point, and the other should be rounded to work out. I want to do the point first right down here with my skew taking some nice slicing cuts. And I want to stay away from that end. I don't need that end just yet. I brought the lace free way up so I can do this little fine cutting. And I'm going to come down and make the last final cuts. I've got a little curly cue coming up, a little fine cut. Keep making planing cuts. And I'm doing this left-handed because Jim Krill told me if you do it left-handed, you'd be a little more careful. So what's Jim know? He's just a specialist, expert, knows a lot of stuff. Oh well. Wow. We well, have this shaped up and sanded it out, and I'm going to use the the same rig, flipping this around, see with me, flip all the way around so I can hold it down here. Be careful putting it back in, you don't want to break your tip off that you did. And now we're just going to bull nose that end a little bit because that's how sewing needles are. Hold it again with the with the, the stronghold chuck. This is a stronghold chuck with number one profile jaws. Profile. No serrations, no grip and nothing. And that's why I'm using a rubber plug to do it. Watch how smooth this fits. Not real smooth, but we can fix that, right? Right. When I'm making this oh, this one, when I'm making this cut, I have the angle for my skew going like this. Alright, and it won't ride up and skip over, it'll ride under and give me a better cut, so I can get a little, little start here. See the fine little cut I can get off the end of it? And swinging my handle around, pulling the handle to my gut, and that's going to bring me right around to that. Ow! Look at that. I hate to say this, but when you're good, you're good. Well, really, I don't hate to say it. I told you I cheat a little bit. I put my tool rest up. I marked my center of my point. And then I carried it on around to the side so I go right through the center of the piece. And I have drilled a 3 16 hole or so. And I'm going to lap it out a little bit to get the center marks off.
no pencil marks, get rid of all the filings and all that. The needle, I think, is ready. We sanded out the needle, and, and actually putting the thread through it was one of the hardest things that I've done. But we came out with a nice little project. I'll show you more about this in a moment. This piece of thinking. My wife told me that buttons only have two holes. Well, buttons are buttons are buttons. So I went to the overcoat closet. Yeah, it's a lot of stuff in the overcoat closet because it's only, well, wow, it's warmed up to 63 degrees today. But I looked at the buttons. Buttons, no two alike. So I got to go along with that. But I have my, my pin or my sewing needle, my thread, which I got at Hobby Lobby, which is just big stuff. And then. I've got my display piece and that's what's going to go out to show my wife the seamstress of the world the quilting queen and she was very she came out to help me with the crossing and all that stuff so it's a nice little project that she wanted now I'll go find a little spot to display it in the studio make her happy because you know once you stop in it you still got to keep paying back all right, I'm Captain Eddie Castellan. I've been in the shop sewing. No, 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 no. I've been in the shop making shavings. That's it. That's what I'm doing. If you ever need me, get a hold of me through my website, www.eddiecastellan.com, or call in the number at the end of the screen and give me a talk to. That's it. I do like this. If I had an overcoat this size, or oh, I do have an overcoat this size. Shoot. For a recap, epilogue, I think that's what it's called. Was that what the Fugitive TV show had an epilogue at the end when they told you what went on? All right, all right here, here you go. All right, we used the one way stronghold chuck with profile jaws. We used that to get the piece, the piece started off. And then we put a Ron Brown's best collapsible jaws or like a long, similar to a long wear chuck. And that's how we held the piece, which we cut out on a bandsaw first. Put a receiver in the back of it using the skew and a couple of scrapers. We finished it. We put sealer on it to finish it. We flipped it around and then held it in that stronghold jaw again with profile jaws because profile jaws won't leave a mark. And then we went through all the thing, all the all the shaping of it and the finishing. Then we took it over to the bandsaw and we drilled four holes in it using a seven sixteenths inch Forstner bit because yeah, yeah, kind of get in, in line with it. Somebody's going to try to shove it through the hole and it'll take hey, it won't fit. So, and we used the, the wood, is was a gift to me, and I still hadn't identified it. I will, or you will. And I made the needle from a doll I got at Hobby Lobby. There you go, folks. Get out there and start sewing. I mean, pardon me, making shavings. I'll get this right. I will.